as of October 15th, 2021, Valve have made a statement regarding NFTs and cryptocurrencies in gaming. And not a statement with words, but a statement of intent. Not on our platform. No thank you. Take that elsewhere. The news of this platform-wide ban came after Space Pirate IO, the developer of upcoming blockchain-based game titled Age of Rust, took to Twitter informing their fans that Steam have amended the guidelines to include a rule that prevents all games of this nature from existing on Steam as a platform. The rule states, quote, applications built on blockchain technology that issue or allow exchange of cryptocurrencies or NFTs not allowed. So while this is not a ban on the underlying technology of blockchain, it is a ban on any project that would use blockchain for its most common purpose in gaming, which seems to be turning whatever it touches into a speculative investment. These projects typically do not attract traditional gamers. They attract people looking to make money from that project. And thus this ruling makes complete sense since Valve operate a traditional gaming platform and not a speculative investment platform. There are, of course, some inconsistencies with this ruling, as well as some speculations, and what better time to go over it than in this video. So I'm not going to use this video for a crash course on the concept of cryptocurrencies or NFTs as a whole, but here are some short examples for anyone who are scratching their head as to what the basic mechanics can look like. I can make a cryptocurrency myself, and I can call it Kira Coin. I arbitrarily say that there's going to be 100 million Kira Coins, and they have a very specific purpose. I then can choose how they're distributed into the world, whether that is by a video game generating them and thus players earning them, me selling them to the public, or any one of a million other means. When they're out there, the people interested in owning them via exchange from others ultimately decide their value, basic supply and demand. Some cryptocurrencies have very specific use cases which do give them value. Others have no inherent value at all, and yet still have a monetary worth. This goes to show that a project can have no actual use case or reason to own besides just wanting to have them and still be worth, in combination, billions of dollars as an overall market cap. If people decide something has value, it has value. This goes also for NFTs, which stands for non-fungible tokens, and at the very basic level, can just be thought of as a unit of data that has verified ownership. This can be almost anything in the digital world. Photos, videos, audio files, an item in a video game. All it means is that you can show proof that this specific piece of data is legitimately owned by whoever has it currently. Think of the difference between, say, a piece of art being verified as real versus a replica that doesn't have that stamp of authenticity. NFTs, much like cryptocurrency, have value while ever the people who are interested in the NFT agree that it has value. So how this pertains to gaming can range from quite simple to very complex, but from what we've seen so far, this usually entails some form of low effort cash grab, an outright scam, or a game that looks like it was designed 15 years ago to run on Flash in your browser. Even the most legit NFT and crypto games so far are very bare bones and expose issues with the system of play to earn as most people involved do not want to play. They only want to earn. They want to own everything and squeeze every penny they can from said platform. The game for many is to make money, not to have fun. Axie Infinity is one of the examples of a crypto backed NFT game that so far seems to be legit. And as you can tell, a AAA game, it is not. I've played Axie Infinity for quite a few hours. It's not that fun in my opinion. It's not that fleshed out yet. And honestly, I don't see it going mainstream. It seems more like a novelty at this point. It is a good proof of concept, but it does also show some problems with this model. A prohibitive cost of entry, a high barrier of entry that it takes over $1,000 currently to actually get into playing this game. So now that you know a little bit more about crypto NFTs and what is currently going on, back to Valve's decision to ban them from the Steam platform, which is the biggest digital distribution platform for PC gaming by an absolute country mile. Valve have not and likely will never come out and tell us why exactly they've made this decision, as Valve are a company that do not typically communicate publicly. They usually make a decision, put the rules out there, and they don't give you a single word as to why. You don't have an open dialogue with Valve. This is one of the few times where I think we would benefit greatly from knowing their official stance on this topic and what the reasoning was for the rule, despite letting those games flourish on the platform for some time now. This new ruling also doesn't appear to be enforced as of yet, despite it already being written into the rules, since projects like Mer4 from We Made Entertainment are still operating on the platform two days later, which is why I've waited to make this video to see if it was actually going to get removed. Mer4 has increased in play count almost daily since their release on August 25th, 
despite the fact it's an autoplay mobile game, and it also incorporates a cryptocurrency called Draco in what they and many others would call a play-to-earn economy. You earn some resources in the game, you trade said resources at a value for the Draco coin, and then that Draco coin can be sold for real-world money, and vice versa. Whether Valve have decided this is somehow an exception, we made simply haven't gotten the memo, or are operating without Valve being aware is unknown, since Valve again choose not to speak on the subject. It is unlikely we're going to find out unless the game is pulled and we made speak about it publicly. But as of now, it is still running, you can still download and apparently play this game. The first speculation as to why Valve have made the decision comes from Space Pirate IO, the developer mentioned at the start of the video, which announced the rule change on Twitter originally as it did pertain to their game. They state, and I quote, Steam's point of view is that items have value and they don't allow items that can have real world value on their platform. Now obviously I can't confirm if this is Valve's actual official policy, but since it's all we have to go on, let's examine this as it seems on surface level to be extremely inconsistent with the reality of how Steam already operates. If you've used the Steam Marketplace or played one of Valve's own games, such as Counter-Strike Global Offensive or Dota 2 or Team Fortress, you know that they already facilitate and profit from items that have a real world value. In fact, I have a knife in my Steam inventory that is allegedly worth about $600, a sticker worth about $800. And if I wanted to, I could put these on Valve's official marketplace and be given store credit on their platform worth over $1,000 if both of them sold. For someone else to buy these items from me on the marketplace, they would either have to have the value in Steam's store credit or take their bank details or credit card and put that money into their platform for my digital items. I could also go off the Steam platform and sell these directly to another user on a trading website, which is what many other users do, to cut out Valve as the middleman and get paid in real world money and not in their store credit, which they associate with your country's currency, but do not allow you to withdraw from the platform. This to me very much looks like digital items created by Valve directly that have a real world value, and they are allowed to exist on Valve's platform. So surely that can't be the reason for banning cryptocurrency in NFT games, or it would be extremely hypocritical and inconsistent as a policy. The term rules for thee and not for me would definitely come to mind. The bigger issue about games on the Valve platform that incorporate NFTs and cryptocurrency in my mind would of course be the risk for all involved besides the game developer or publisher, the risk to users on the platform, the risk of legal liability for Valve as a business, for allowing this grey market investment platform posing as games to damage their user base, not to mention the chances that children or young adults under the age of 18 using the platform could stumble upon what could definitely be labelled as predatory gaming. Although we all know Valve have no issue with games that employ predatory tactics that market themselves to children, as loot boxes are a major part of the business model for video games nowadays, including the games that Valve make themselves, with the cases in CSGO for instance. A vehicle to gambling addiction, with a potential payoff of items that you could trade on the Steam marketplace, which according to this rule, if this is the actual reason, don't have a real world value, otherwise how could they exist if that is their stance on digital items? For me, I'd say it makes the most sense that Valve simply do not want to deal with the bullshit that comes hand in hand with this current trend. Valve famously do not do very much work in terms of moderating games that come onto the platform. You can pretty much get anything on there if you are already approved. There have been scams on the early access section over the years, complete shovelware garbage coming out every single day. And I think if you combine the fact that Valve wouldn't be getting a financial cut since the Steam platform would advertise and launch the game, but not get any revenue from the trading that occurs on the blockchain because it obviously isn't on the Steam marketplace, as well as the fact that they would be getting complaints if things went wrong, the risk of legal action and the fact that they don't want to spend time moderating what is and isn't a cash grab amounts to this decision. We know Valve as a business are not against cryptocurrency as they were one of the very few early adopters of Bitcoin as a payment method all the way back in 2017, when Bitcoin wasn't even really super legitimized yet. Though of course they would ultimately remove it shortly after due to the volatile nature of it as a currency. Valve get a lot of credit from me all the time for pushing the boundaries of tech in gaming and this just looks like they said, that looks like a lot of effort, let's not allow that as opposed to being completely against the idea, as the idea is already very similar to their own operation with the Steam Marketplace just to a much lesser extent and much more controlled and centralized. Now, obviously having said all that, 
do I think Valve shouldn't have banned NFT and crypto games? No, of course not. I, I think they should have actually banned them much sooner. While I'm not inherently against the idea of these types of games existing for those people who are interested in them, Steam is simply not the platform for these to exist, and I don't think it ever will be unless things get legitimized a lot more and obviously rules and regulations come into place. Especially since the market of NFT and cryptocurrency games is currently so front-loaded with scams and cash grabs, even mainstream projects vanish with millions of dollars, and others raise hundreds of millions of dollars without showing a single gif of gameplay. I would just always much prefer some transparency as to why this has happened so we know going forward what their stance is on things because like it or not Valve and Steam is a major player in what becomes popular and what happens in the gaming space. So I think in the future perhaps these models if incorporated in a less greedy less predatory way could give us as consumers some benefits while likely also creating problems as you very rarely solve things without creating other issues. You can look at Valve and Steam as a model and that can be used as a perfect example of how this could actually work. You take CSGO, exactly how it is as a game, but turn the skins into NFTs, which they essentially already are, but they are on the Steam platform alone and not being able to withdraw or trade them elsewhere, which means that it's very centralized and Steam are the ones who are ultimately in control of everything. If you let people freely trade them, you already have this as a proof of concept that it can work. Although in this example, it's quite clear why Valve wouldn't allow this. And that's because while they control the trade, they get all the trading fees while reducing the chances of anything going wrong since they control everything. The additional element to this story is, of course, here comes Epic Games, the company that have everything to gain by point scoring against Valve, as they are currently trying their very best to compete in the digital distribution market for PC gaming. Not so long back, Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic, said they were not interested in touching NFTs, and then as soon as Valve's ban was made public, wasted no time in making a proclamation that Epic Games are open to the idea of NFT and cryptocurrency games on their platform, the Epic Game Store, which is a little bit odd. They could, of course, in that original interview mean that they don't want to add them to their own games, but are open to other developers using the technology. But from my own experience watching social media and covering these types of projects on my channel for the last few months, I'm not exactly sure Tim knows the landscape or the optics of this. I would imagine if you're doing this, you want gamers to react positively. And in my experience, gamers do not like the idea of NFT and crypto in games, and they don't want them. The overwhelming consensus I see every day on social media is that people want games to remain games and do not want a financial incentive attached in any way. So if he was doing this as a way to get some positive PR from gamers, I don't think this was the right move. And just for the record, I don't believe that NFTs, cryptocurrency, blockchain and gaming is always going to be an overtly negative thing. I just think it's going to be for some people, for some games and not for others. And done properly, blockchain and gaming could have some positives. It could give some agency back to players to own the skins and the things we purchase within the game. And you can think of Magic the Gathering in real life as an example for this or any other collectible card game. The ability to buy the cards you want play with them, trade with them, and then if you stop playing the game, cash them out and move on to another hobby. In digital card games at the moment, the developers don't let you trade because they want to control the whole economy and make the most money from you. It's extremely predatory in my opinion. It makes the game worse. They're removing a whole facet of the game, which is the trade and the economy from the cards and things that you own. If you have that with NFTs, then obviously you own your cards and therefore you can always have a value to them. Which obviously isn't without problems, but they're problems that already exist in the card game and people still do enjoy that. So again, it might not be for everybody, but I do think there are benefits. And again, if you just look at Steam's marketplace and how they do skins with being able to trade them and they have a real world value, this could be done in almost any game that uses cosmetics only. And I do think it is positive for a consumer. The issue is, and may forever be, that the technology is getting a bad rap due to the current implementation with so many scams, with so many greedy people just using this as a cash grab, it is possible that it never gets the chance to get off the ground as something that could possibly be a benefit for consumers. But we are going to have to wait and see what the future holds. For now, though, we can rest easy knowing that that future will not be operating on Steam while ever the market is so full of these scams and generally low effort garbage. So thank you as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video or found it informative in some way. Leave me a like and a comment on the video. Subscribe. All these things are completely free. They really help out my life, so I would appreciate it. 
And if you check out the links in the video description, you can catch me on Twitch. Join the discussion on Discord, which you can also find by typing discord.gg forward slash Kira TV in your browser. And also throw some coins to me on Patreon if you are that way inclined. Appreciate you all. Hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Stay safe out there. We out. Peace. Thank you.